Nothing with Patrick. Should I? No, start over. I'm going to start all over again. I'm sorry, you guys. No, 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 Okay. Well, good God. Sorry, you guys. We, we're gonna be we're gonna be filming in the dark. We were yeah. doing we were doing audio there, so I'm gonna start all over again because we have a lot of things to cover. We, uh, I know you didn't hear me before, but we were talking about the forum and how Gabriel and Pam have been doing research and posting their projects, and we're really excited about the forum because people are helping one another. And uh, we're talking about the YouTube as usual. That's doing great, and that's free. So all you people who are watching. Uh, from YouTube, welcome, and uh, this is a question and answer live, and now we can take them, and I'm going to catch up to see, are there any questions, comments uh, that we have, uh, Michaela, right now? Okay, good, I'm glad. So we're caught up. So um, I, I wanted to mention Jimmy's project is up here, and um, we're going to talk about that and have Jimmy come up. did want to mention that we have a new class posted on the online classes. You guys should check that out, broadwayupholsterysupply.com. And also, while you're there, you can check out some of the supplies handpicked by me uh, to help you experience the best you can in the upholstery world. So I think that catches me up. So I, 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 before I get to my questions, uh, my uh, comments um, that we usually do from the YouTube, and also we got a couple of emails uh, that came in that are kind of exciting. And as usual, live question and answers take precedent over even Jimmy. What? I'm sitting over here. <laughs> I wanted to get actually. You're, you're surprising me every time I come here. I can't take that. Jimmy, I want to talk about this chair. This is a Mission Oak chair that came in, and um, it, it reminds me of that arts and crafts chair that we didn't know what the carvings were on, and we're still talking. We got a lot of feedback that, on I think that. It's going to be the subject matter of the. You know what we're going to find out? Somebody who is going to be glancing at your website will say, "I know what that is." And I think somebody's going to, I think we may never know the answer, but the nice thing about this chair is that most of the furniture that comes to me, people, people don't want really to reveal the family name or the origins and things like that, which is fine. Mm -hmm. So I can present a chair, uh, but not have any much detail on the family. But this chair, uh, they gave me great permissions to use names and, every, and dates and everything else, and I'm kind of excited about but this. But I, I, that's a great chair. That's very strong. Well, I think, I think, unlike the other one, this is pretty obvious what it might be, right? So look, I'm going to put this paper behind here for people to see. If they couldn't see the cross, there are two okay. crosses on this chair. So, so here's the story behind this chair. I'm really excited about this chair to get into this chair to redo this. This is the fabric that the person that the person had picked. It's kind of a different fabric. It's a geometric fabric, and my tools are all ready to go. I'm ready to tear this apart, which I'm not going to be able to do on on live. But so I want to talk about this chair. So this chair um, was a deacon. It's a deacon's chair, and um, this is the customer's great grandfather. So she's the third generation, and she's got a generation under her, Jimmy, fourth generation. So this is a fourth generation chair in this family, and I love this story. So this, uh, the great-grandfather, or the great-great-grandfather, if you're the child of this, of the customer, mm -hmm. he was an elder in a congregational church. Okay. He was born in 1888, and the chair was given to, was gifted to him when he retired from the church in, in the 1950s. Wow. So it's got great family history. So I had a great, I love talking about family history with my clients. I was, I was saying to her, I, I, was, I remarked that uh, I wanted to know a little bit more about her great-grandfather, whose name was, this is great that I can say this with permission, Forrest Bushwell. So he was a deacon and he was an elder. So he wasn't actually a minister of any types. He was an elder. Which but means what? I think, well, I'm not sure, I'm not too familiar with the congregational church and how they do things, but I think that he was given a certain hierarchy in the church as an elder, and he, and I think maybe at the altar, he was, he was maybe a helper on the altar, and this was his chair probably on the altar. Okay, kind of like an official. Yeah, kind of, kind of an like elder, they like call him church him. elder, yeah, in the congregational church. So, I think, what I remarked to her is that we were talking a little bit about this man's faith and how... He used to read, he has a Bible next to his bed, and he used to read the Bible and carry the Bible everywhere with him. And when he's that many generations ago, she's still talking about it. So I, I just think, and I was talking about my family. I had a, a I'm a Catholic, so I had a, a, a great aunt that was a nun. She was a nun over, for over 50 years in the inner city in New York. She's a toughie then. She was, uh, she was worked in Harlem 
for over 50 years teaching in Harlem. And then I had a great uncle who was a, who was a priest, who was a priest in the Boston area. So, so we still talk about them in my family, and that's going back a few generations. So I just, I just was remarkable that, that um, you know, faith does last, I think, in families, and, and it's a great subject matter. And to have a chair to identify with an older member, with, a, with an ancestor, I think is wonderful. And she's going to have this chair party for another three or four generations, I'm sure. So I think that's it with that, and so I'm excited about getting into that. I'm going to put that aside for now because we're not going to have to get to Jimmy's. Um, before I go on, I want to talk about this chair that came in actually. So I want to talk a little bit about this faux leather that we have it in the industry wide. We're having terrible time with faux leather. Um, and even, this is a good brand, I won't tell you the brand is, but it's a very good brand, so it's very well made. Everything on this is perfect. This is only eight years old, folks. Everything on this is perfect, except look what's happening to the faux leather. And then the clients assured me that it's not overused, it wasn't overused for eight years. I'm starting to see a lot of this lately, you guys, so I'm starting to wonder about faux leather. I'm starting to wonder if, um, you know, there are good grades, there are grades of faux leather, some are better than others, but... Um, so this customer, I insisted, if you're going to do it over again, and they agreed, you need real leather. So guess what? They went and they bought real leather for this, and I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little apprehensive because this is a difficult job to do. Um, I would have preferred fabric, but um, the leather I insist upon a very good leather. And what makes it good leather, you guys? So leather is four millimeters thick usually. And the bottom two millimeters of leather is used in the industry. It's it's really not the good leather. Um, so that the so that the, the subpar you know leather companies get that. The upper two millimeters is the good leather. That's the leather that you want with the stipulation that the cows um, are not rubbing up against razor wire or bob wire. So they have to be the free range cows. Uh, because you don't want to scratch in the middle of a, of a hide. Sometimes on a bit of bad leather, you get that. So the other thing, too, is the leather has to be of a, of a type that is, is, is thin, that you don't want it too thick. To, you, need, you need to work like, a, like it would a fabric. So those are the conditions that I put to my customers. I do not even supply leather. I, I just have them. I just have people buy it. And there are good, really good brands out there of leather. So that's it for that. I just wanted to show you this. One of the things that I did, just to let you guys upholstering know, is I took the, this welting that has to go inside this groove. The first thing that I wanted to see is how deep is my little channel here. Um, the deeper that channel, the easier my job is going to be. Okay. So um, I, I was happy to see a deep channel. So I'm almost ready. There are three of these, and I'm almost ready to do these. So I'm going to put this aside. just want to catch you guys up on some work that's come in. We always have some interesting projects, from John Belushi's sofa to uh, Napoleon's chair. I mean, his actual chair. Not, not, a, Napo not a Napoleon chair. Napoleon's chair. So, so from A to Z, we, we get it covered being a you know a, one of the busiest upholstery shops in New England I, I guess at this point so I'm gonna get to unless there's questions any comments or questions coming in I'm gonna get to my no, no a comment. comment there's a comment um, Randy. Randy says fabric showroom that I deal with here pulled all of the faux leather books for just the reasons you are showing no kidding we might look into this a little bit more what's that faux leather Full leather. It's well, didn't we? We had, I remember having somebody here when we had the classes going on. She did some leather chairs like mm -hmm. that. She had a leather chair, mm -hmm. and you were. I mean, she did a great job with it overall. Real leather. Yeah, no fake leather. Fake leather. Yeah. Fake leather. And you were kind of apprehensive about it at yeah. the time because you weren't sure about. Well, I was assured that there are different grades of, of full leather, so we went. Uh, you know, some of them are showing a hundred thousand double rub. And and so we went to that. Now I'm going to have to re I'm going to have to revisit this. I'm going to do some more research. If you guys want to do research on the forum, feel free. Uh, but well, you know we want when for, when you look at a, when you look at that chair eight years old, that's not a, that's not acceptable. I mean I always say that when you upholster a piece of furniture, you want 15 years at least. That's even heavy use. 15 15. I've seen fabrics last 25 years. Leather. I've had leather 100 a good leather. 
125 years, 120 years, you know. Well, with something like this, I mean, it would, when I look, looked at it, I would say, what the, how often did they use this? Not often. That was, that was, that's the whole thing. Yeah. They I didn't mean, abuse it. They weren't abused. They weren't abusing it. And they didn't use it a lot. So we're going to have to re-examine that. So I'm going to get to the emails now. Email from John. John says, I've been watching your videos and have subscribed to your YouTube site. Thank you. Uh, I've got six Restoration Hardware Kitchen Island chairs with oval backs. They are very similar to the square one that you were trying to retain the front and put the purple velvet on the back side and it had a piece of wood in it. I've stripped down one of the chairs and exactly the same but with an oval back. When I deconstruct the chair I was able to retain the wood intact. A million staples but I survived. I repainted it as well so far as it looked brand new. I'm ready to start reupholstering but I've been torn about pulling the wood back or adding webbing. I prefer the webbing as I think it would use way less staples, but the wood has a curve to it and that makes a nice shape on the chair back. You said to an email that with any questions that I thought would give it a shot. I'm an American from Philadelphia and worked for a British company for 35 years and now I'm retired and I live just outside of London. I've got nothing but time on, my locked, on the lockdown over here, so I've taken this project to reupholster these kitchen, six kitchen chairs and would love it if you could give me a little direction. So uh, when, when it comes to refinishing outside backs, I, I, I don't like cardboard, and I know that he's not saying cardboard. Cardboard's not good. I'll tell you why cardboard's not good, because cardboard, when it makes a dent, it stays a dent. And a lot of times when people move furniture, even these little kitchen chairs, they're putting their knee into the back uh, to move it. If they're moving it by themselves, that, that seems to be the leverage thing, especially on bigger chairs. So cardboard is not good. Um, uh, what I use is webbing and a stretcher, another piece of fabric, and a little half layer of cotton on my fully upholstered furniture. Now when you have wood, sometimes I, I don't mind wood because wood is not going to dent. dent. But you do need to use something over the wood. I have no objection to him using wood on these. I think the reason is because uh, the manufacturer he went to the wood on the outsides is because of the high traffic issues that kitchen chairs face. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a lot of people walking. You're going to get a lot of people hitting into them. You're going to get a lot of people elbowing them. You're going to pick them up in a way. So I'd say go with the wood. Thanks, John, for your comment. Uh, Randy, Randy, Randy just made a comment, right? Just yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So Randy says, "I watched your price. This is a, an email. I watched your pr uh, pricing video for about the third time today. I have a question related to fabric markup. When a customer purchases fabric from you by their project, for their project, do you sell it to them at the manufacturer's re suggested? Re he says price. It should say retail price. Yes, I do." or do you take some sort of discount? Next question will be how much discount do you usually give? That's, uh, I do all of that. Uh, so, so we are faced in the industry with amazing competition, which, you know, if, you, if, if you're a capitalist, you say that that's a good thing. Yeah, competition is good. Actually, I would say competition keeps you fresh, keeps you on your guard, it keeps you good. It keeps the cutting edge, which is fine. So, but we're, we're faced now with the internet. It, it has some good things, like you're seeing me. I've never been on the internet before the internet. I've never been able to show my wares you know, to, to a vast audience like this. That's a good thing. Uh, bad thing is that there's a lot of websites that are offering, believe it or not, uh, fabrics that I offer. I, I had a situation the other day um, where I, let's say I, I had a fabric for six, retail fabric for $65. I had a situation the other day, they came in and said, I can get it for 44 on the internet, which is almost what it is uh, wholesale. So at that point, I, I'll go with uh, loyalty. I said, well, you know, you can support us by giving us what we need, which is full retail. But then, you know, you get into this uh, back and forth. You can say you can offer 10% off that, which is fine. You know, good thing, really important to remember is that, you know, we're all looking for a break. We're all looking for a bargain. And so we, we kind of work with our clients that way. It's so one thing I never do is my labor. I cannot go down on my labor. Most people understand that. Most people understand labor. With the fabric, though, because it's a good... Uh, so, th so this is a case-to-case, customer-to-customer thing. I never go over full retail. Um, some people do. Some people go 400% over wholesale costs. No way. And you know who does that? The, the manufacturers do that a lot. Manufacturers are not in the business of selling fabric by itself. So if you like a fabric on a sofa that you go into a manufacturer's, 
their markup is 400%. Keep that in mind, you guys. So I think a fair markup is is uh, suggested retail is fine. You know, I think that's fine. And then um, never over that for me. And then, you, you know, you, you could give 10, 15% off. Depends on how many yards of fabric they're getting to. You know, you open up, really, there's a lot of variables here, as you can see. I hope I covered them all. Thank you very much. I'm going a little fast because I think we have a lot to cover. Right, Pat? Yeah. It's a lot windier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, we're faced with the windstorm. Oh, I guess, you know <laughs> what? When we set it up, it's so nice. No wind. And then as soon as we start, there's wind. I know. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess, who, guess who you're going to hear from tonight? Oh, my God. What? Guess who? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's somebody that's not liking this at all. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Patrick. Take it, take it. Well, then we have the special little phone thing that's covering the mic, so hopefully that's helping. Okay. Oh, yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah. I see something new up there. Email from Russ. I've been looking through your videos, and I really appreciate them. They help me out tremendously. The only thing I haven't found on any of your videos is how to upholster the back of an antique chair that has nothing there to start with. I would really like to send you a picture of it. If you can get back with me, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for your videos. I need a pen, which I didn't bring with me. Jimmy, do you have a pen no, on you? No, of course not. I left everything inside. You had me moving. I need a pen. I need a store. pen, Patrick. Can you get me a pen? Or a magic marker would be better. Magic marker or pen. Whatever. Something to write with. That's the problem, being out here. I have nothing next to <laughs> I'm gonna... hmm. So he has an outside back of an antique chair that's just wood. So he's wondering how do I cover it. So he's, he's got, yeah, I assume it's a finished piece of wood. Let's just assume that it's a finished piece of wood. Oh boy. The key here, you guys. Now, Jimmy did a video online, and I'm not sure if he's an online watcher, but I think he's going to get a good view of what <laughs> this is if he watches Jimmy's online class, the Boston Ottoman. The mm -hmm. Boston Ottoman has the solution to his problem, okay? But it, it's a little, it's a little different. So he's got. Let's say this is the finished piece of wood around here, right? Okay? This is all finished. What I just did, what I'm showing you, what I just did is I took a five thirty second weld cord. Listen to me, you guys, and I just attached it to the wood on the out uh, right here. It doesn't matter what fabric it is. Five thirty second weld cord is what you want. And then he's going to pad up the cotton on the inside, and then he's going to upholster around that lip. And he's got what he's going to do is create like a little groove, like I showed you on that chair that I just showed you, where his fabric, that 532nd weld cord, creates a little groove, a really straight. It's going to be really straight groove in which to staple him. And then he puts his double piping or his gimp over that. It's pretty much, I know I haven't shown this on a video, I hope that helped him, but that's pretty much what you do. Randy wants to know if you're grilling. I wish I was grilling. You guys caught me at a bad time here. You know, I, I would love to get a grill out here. Something small, I was at Home Depot the other day. You guys obviously caught me at a bad time. You <laughs> know? Patrick, who is this? They're out, well, they're outside because it's 72 degrees for the first Yeah, we're really time. excited. It's like, it's like we've been given freedom. Yes. Where we're free. We're and again, free. Patrick mentions a grill. A grill. Randy, Randy mentioned that. Ram, sorry. Yes. Well, you mentioned <laughs> a grill from Patrick. <laughs> Who is this Patrick that sent this with the Terry. lasers? Who? Terry. Terry is yeah. using lasers, you guys. And and uh, you know we talk about we talk about Star Trek last week, and uh, and now we're talking about lasers this week. And somebody said somebody said Jimmy was reminded what it of major mud on Star Trek. Not major mud. <laughs> God, <laughs> not man. Major Mud. Ed, if there's a character in Star Trek, the yeah, last Ma name was... Not Major Mud. Mud. <laughs> good God, you are so it's bad. It's not Major Mud. His last name was Mud. But anyhow, this week we're featuring Terry's sofa that she used her brand new laser to line up all, all of the patterns. That's a fantastic... That. that is classy. And I, I bet she even lined up on the side going this way, horizontally and vertically. I'm sure she right got both them, right? Isn't classy. that a nice job, you guys? Wow, you know, I, I, I'm amazed at how, how clever people can be, right, right Jimmy? We, we have got a good group of our folks, Kevin. Now we're on the YouTube questions yeah. and comments, right? We're going to start with Toby, and this is about the upholstery show live last week, right? 
I was not there for that. I, I think you were. You were in the studio audience, the vast studio audience. Yeah, I think we'll have to get rid of that cardboard cutout. <laughs> <here. laughs> Toby says, I love your videos and have started to use them to refresh my memory. During my ongoing small DIY pro upholstery projects, I have currently decided to, to recover a small occasional chair that I had upholstered for the first time a number of years back. I am at the stage of having to apply the decorative gimp, but I really would like to avoid having to use a hot glue gun this time. Is it possible, do you reckon, if I simply the pro if I simplify the process and use a high quality fabric glue instead, I would I would be able to achieve similar results? Well, I'm not familiar with the fabric glue, but you know, before hot glue guns, we used to use Elmer's glue and Pintac. So it's essential, I think, even with this fabric glue, that you need to Pintac the GIMP. And by pin tack in the gimp, you know, if you've seen my videos, you know that that's only putting the tack in halfway. So what you do is you glue up the gimp, you you put it you you, you put it to the the fabric to the chair or so for whatever you're working on, and then you take a six ounce tack usually and you pin it. And what that does is that acts like a little mini clamp. This is very important if you're not using hot glue. You don't have to do this with hot glue because it's three seconds, it's dry, right? And you've seen my techniques with the hot glue, and I don't blame. Toby for not wanting to use it, if especially because you get get burnt with that, right? But with the with the almonds, there's no problem, right? The almonds or the fabric glue, but I think you still need to introduce that little gimp tack. I mean that pin tack, six ounce tack, about every one to two inches, one inch, you know. And then you let it dry, and some people let it sit for 24 hours. And then when you take it out, very important. This is how we used to do it in the old days. You don't pull it, you twist it, right? You twist it out. When I used to take my producer to pick apples in the old days, right? When they tell you, they say, don't pull, don't pull the apple and take the whole tree, the whole branch with you, right, Jimmy? They say, twist it one, two, yes. three times, and the apple should fall off into your hand. When you pull the apple, you can take a branch, and you can yeah, take, you want to next season, you can take 30 apples down with you, you know? You don't want to do that, Jimmy. So right, that's coming up with another apple pie. You, you, God, get, you we know. have so much to talk we about. We could have a cooking class <laughs> out here tonight. <laughs> right at the grill, we'd be all set. Steak tips, So when tips. you when you take the tack, the pin tack, you take a pair of pliers and twist it. Twist it out. Okay, twist it and take a little force. Don't pull it. Craig says... Fixing upholstery damage by a, a cat. If you've seen this video, you guys, you got to see this video because I don't think this person had a cat. I think they, I think they either had a feral cat or they had a mountain lion, and they thought it was a cat. <laughs> oh, like that, like that beaver that comes in on that woman every night. Well, yeah. Well, there was one oh, woman who, uh, who had a pet. Rabbit. She had a raccoon. She thought it was something else. No, she thought it was a cat, like a neighbor you know, cat. Some, some people, oh, some, tonight, some people. Know. I take fell cats in the house. That's not a good thing. You don't want to do that. Oh no! You uh, will not. Your house may not be the same. But this cat, you should see it. Uh, you guys, you guys, gotta look at this. Damaged by fixing upholstery, damaged by a pet. There was a, a little pot that was reasonable, right? And we fixed that. And he says that's one board cat. It needs scratching posts all over to stop that damage. You should see the damage. The whole arm was ripped apart, Jimmy. Oh, guess where that cat would be. <laughs> oh well, no. We love we love cats. We love dogs. Okay. We love pets. Off here. <laughs> Upholsters love love these little these little critters, Jimmy. <laughs> sure they do. <laughs> and then Janine says uh, for the same program, the uh, upholstery show. Uh, as always, great question and answer. Thank you, Janine, for being one of our best supporters going and one of our earliest supporters. What did I use the word phrase? Old. You used the word the phrase old time as earlier to me. Uh, no, that was you, Kevin. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about when you say old times. Like, what are you talking about? You know, we're in that group, you know. I know. Although I, I woke up this morning feeling like I was 13 years old, really. I, so you know, what I had, did you do? had the energy. You I don't went know, back I just, to bed. Well, you know, you know, I went to work. I wake up early, Jimmy. I, I told Jimmy I wake up at 4.45, and then he informed me he wakes up at 3.30. Well, whoop de do. He beats me by an hour and a half. Well, yeah, you know, I, I was going to say, why don't you come over for breakfast in the morning? But, well, <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry about it. Speaking of terms and phrases, whoop de do. I, I bet Patrick's never heard of that either. But whoop earlier, I used the term. I was talking to you about about something, and I, and I, uh, you, I said tiddlywinks. Did yes. you ever play tiddlywinks? 
Do you know I what never did. I had better things. I had Candid Land tournaments and uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Well, well Tiddly Winks was a robots. game you played with those little discs, those little plastic discs and you push yeah. it down and they go flying, Maybe, you know. So so what was the object? Because I never really played. So wh why don't you tell people in about thirty seconds? Right? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got you one make me Google it now, you <laughs> Fixing a pop button, uh, Linda says, I have a sofa that appears to have snapped together buttons. The top part of the button popped off and the back side is still tufted to the sofa. Is there a way to reattach the top part of the button? I can't find anything showing this. So Linda, what you need to do is get a hot glue gun um, or an adhesive that you can trust, so maybe even Gorilla Glue maybe. And you need, that's the only way you're gonna fix this unless I mean, a professional, what a professional would do is go to the bottom of the sofa, take a piece of the fabric somewhere on the sofa, and make a, another button, and make sure that it wouldn't pop like that. So, a button should never pop like that if you've got good dies and a good button maker, and a, and, and a good person making the buttons. All that has to come together so that these, this doesn't happen. This is a bad thing when it happens, because what you're seeing is just that silver part of the button against a beautiful tufted sofa. So you got a problem. The easy way, try to try an adhesive. Just try to glue it back. If not, you have to go through that process of making a button. And the making a button is not easy. I don't advise people with these um, arts and crafts button makers that they have the hand button makers. They don't work. You'll have the same problem. So I hope that was helpful. Um, so Les Zek, um, Bentwood Rocker Restoration. Great, thank you. Right now I had this kind of chair and I will be making a renovation. Excellent. You'd like to hear that. People have courage. You know, you need to have courage, right? I used to have an upholster when I first was, was starting out. And, you know, you'd be apprehensive about working on a, an antique and he'd say, it's only a chair, don't be afraid, you know. It's not going to bite you. Yeah. Right, Jimmy? Yeah, <laughs> everything back then, it, it doesn't bite. <laughs> it doesn't bite, yeah. Don't worry. Um... And oh, here's another one about the Bentwood Rocker Part Three. Thank you. I th I think of making seat on belts, no on cushion. Do you think it would be possible on this type of construction? I think of making seat on belts, no on cushion. I'm not sure what he mean by that. If 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 he's watching, I would like to him to clarify this because I don't understand what he's saying. And um, I think you're going to introduce. We're going to introduce our dog, our beautiful mascot. This is a beautiful golden retriever, Finn, named Finn. Hi, Finn, how are you? <laughs> Isn't he gorgeous, you guys? Are you kidding me? This this guy's so full of love, it isn't funny. What's he up needs, for so far? He needs to be trained, though. <laughs> yeah, because he he just too, <laughs> much. <laughs> <That's> too much. <laughs> <laughs> Did he bite you again, Jimmy? No, he kind of showed, he showed he's got that habit. Are you going to train him soon? Yeah, we're taking him next week. So, Janine says, isn't he cute? He's, he's such a, a cutie, but you know, he's, a, he's still a puppy. Yeah, he's so, got that energy level up. Yeah. So Janine says, she's talking about the card mahogany. She purchased, Jimmy, your class, so the pressure is on for you to perform. Okay. She purchased lesson one, week one, deconstruction, and she says, this looks like a very interesting project. This is the card mahogany chair. Oh, God. I'm so glad I subscribed for another year. She signed up for another Thank year. You, Janine. Thank you, Janine. So, do, is that where we start sending out the eight by tens of you and I? Well, no. She's got. She's got. Uh, she's focused on Patrick now, and and. Um, what? Michaela. Yeah, and Michaela. <laughs> the camera work and editing has improved, and the close-ups were just where they were needed. A very professional production, so great work. Oh, she didn't mention me. Nothing about you, Jimmy. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Janine says another she says she's got another comment new format looks great thank, thank you. you and for all of you guys who don't know what she's talking about or are watching this or will watch this when it's not live you got to check out the new format on the online classes it's like a brand new system I mean um, I even was I was so impressed by what Patrick's done I, I can't even believe it I mean I don't know where you got this skill from but um, it's really the interaction is better than Patrick, yeah, with the it's everything. Using yeah, Janine. Janine's really excited because she's got another comment here. I just watched the full episode of this project as I resubscribed for the yearly subscription. It was a great episode. There is going to be a lot of techniques in this chair, and the camera work and ed editing are excellent. Best value classes and best most knowledgeable upholstery teacher anywhere. Sorry, Jimmy. Still no mention of you. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But you know, I know Janine loves you. Budget, budget <laughs> uh, don't worry, she'll, she'll she'll make a comment. Yeah, yeah, like you get Jimmy off the air. Oh, here, here's here's one. Um, this is from Janine. Oh, Jimmy is wonderful. You should keep You're him lying. as long as I can. The next question: Fire Jimmy, please. <laughs> yeah, let's take a poll. Do we need, really need Jimmy after all? Oh, I think people are going to respond to that, of course. Caning to upholstery, conversion, upholstery, and preserve your caning. Sounds like a sounds like a campaign. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank God for your videos. I have some Ford and Johnson chairs that someone removes the caning from and use plywood for the seats. Bad idea. And I am now trying to restore them back to an upholstered look that Ford and Johnson had in most of their chairs. Can you tell me what brand of staples you use? I have an easy staple gun. I use a number seven Empire staple. I use quarter inch, three inch, and eight and half inch, Jimmy. And the staples that we have, you know, this isn't a plug because I'm answering his question on the Broadway Upholstery Supply dot com, right? Is is the staple that I've selected? You'd be surprised. Even if you get the number seven staple, mm -hmm. and you get your three eight staple, you're going to have a gun that jams because some of the this quality, different quality is everything, Jimmy. Yeah. And some of the glues that they use on some of these staples don't work very well with your gun. Not now, compatible enough. Not compatible because it, the the hammer gets jammed. And when you jam a hammer on one of these pneumatic guns, you have to go in there and, and take the staple out. Every time you do that, you damage the hammer. Mm. So that the idea is to have a gun, which we have the BEA gun is the best, which we have online, and the proper staples. You need both. You need both. Right? So I'm not sure about his gun, uh, what what size that I, I'm not familiar with that gun he's talking about. But I know the BEA takes the staples that I have. So we got another one um, from Alice, a Bentwood Rock. Alice says, "I've recently bought one of these antique chairs and would love to do this. How much do you think it would cost if I get someone to do this, please?" Also, is there any pictures of the of the videos of the final product that bentwood rocker that's about a four or five hundred dollar labor cost plus three yards of fabric at, at my shop um, but shops vary Alice I'm not sure where you where you're located um, obviously if you're in California you're not going to use me but then I have no idea what the pricing is out there um, Probably expensive. yeah well it depends on what metropolitan area you're in too you know it really does depend geography has a big factor even where I am I have the Boston metropolitan area. I have Boston proper, which covers Boston, and then uh, communities outside of Boston, which fall into metropolitan Boston, which are pretty much the same cost. But once you start exiting, we, we have a road we call 128, although they change it to 95. Once you cross over that, that's a different economic bracket in, ma in a lot of cases. That's a different geography. That's less money. And then we have uh, outside of 495 in our area, in the Worcester area, and, and, and out, out west that way, that's another area. And what that means, Jimmy, the pricing keeps going down and down the further west you go. Yeah. Isn't that Hopefully interesting? things are a little bit cheaper out there, rent and cost. And I think uh, it, it, that's right. The cost of living is less, so, so, you know, it does reflect. It's interesting. Okay, so I'm done with my, my questions. If there's, are we any questions and answer, Patrick? Uh, no. Nope. Nope. Okay, so there's a lot of, I hope there's a lot of banter back and forth with people on uh, helping one another, even on the comments that we have. But like, like yeah, everyone else is always good at that. Good, good. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to um, actually present Jimmy, because Jimmy's done, we, we kid Jimmy a lot. He's a good sport. And uh, we're going to present Jimmy. Jimmy, would you like to come up here with oh. the presentation is, of all this? Is there money work? involved? Well, no. There's a T-shirt, though. <laughs> Jimmy, we'd like to present you, Jimmy, with this T-shirt with the little slogan on it. And I, I think you want to hold that up for people wow. to see. What does it say? Pulsars never die; they always recover. Oh my God! Yeah, and there's a fellow down there uh, on his back, and uh, he has hair, though. Oh, uh, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it looks like he's going to recover because okay. there's a chair back there. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Enjoy that. Thank uh, you. All your friends will now know that you're an upholsterer, right? So, Jim, 
let's catch up on what you've done, what you were doing today oh, on your class. Yeah. Measuring, man. Measuring I'll let you know. the theme. You tell people what you were doing. Well, we were measuring out for the cushion today. And so that took about the full hour. Well, actually, it's going to take a little bit more time because I have to take it home. Wow, well, I'll be... Or I can stop by this week and do it. Finish it up yeah. if you want. But it's going to probably take about an hour and a half total time. But there were, uh, again, the top and bottom for the cushion. And we had the... Sur the uh, uh, boxing. The boxing. Uh, we had a measure for the zipper that's going to be installed. The zipper. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, I never were... I, I didn't think it was going to... I Actually, I thought we were going to do the backing today. In that well, thing. it's interesting. Um, so what we did was we cut the body out. And we we know there's an order to things. Okay. And when, when he's cutting the body, when Jimmy was cutting the, bar, the the body out on this, I was I was saying to him that he wanted a square, he wanted to square up every so often, get the best out of his fabric. You guys, if you watch you the YouTube videos or this class, you'll see how we present how we do that. It's very simple. We just have a a, a, a slash mark indicating up and down, a slash mark side to side. We label everything. Yes. And what I did was I don't like I don't overload. Okay. Right. So I said to Jimmy, don't worry about the cushion right now. Let's right. just do the body. Let's focus on the body. I would suggest that you guys do that. If you look at a project, especially a project like this, multifaceted, a lot of lot of moving parts oh. on this. If you look at it and try, don't look at the thing. Don't, it's too overwhelming. So that's what I did with the cutting. So we focused on the body. Mm -hmm. We focused on getting the square cuts. Okay. And then it's and then once Jimmy was done with that, he needed welting. He needed piping. Right. So so at that point, I said, now we're going to cut your cushion. Yes. But we're going to make sure that you have enough fabric on the end to get a long welting. This is really important. So so we, we, we instead of doing we focused on this today right. because I wanted to make sure that we had the piping to go two pipings, right? Because your cushion's going to have the a top piping. and bottom, top and bottom, and yeah. then also you, you're going to have a piping running along the base of this inside arm. Okay. But everything else, you're, you're putting tacks in, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the only welting you're going to have on this. Okay. The top and bottom of the cushion, and okay. the, but they were long. They were like 200 and 126. What was it? Yeah, 126 inches. Yeah, 126 around. inches that he needed. So we had to be real careful. He didn't do cross cuts at that point, right? Because that would have really, well, you explain what what would have happened if they did. Well, I, I mean, if 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 we weren't careful at cutting this out, and we had we would have had enough fabric to complete the job, but the difference would we would have to seam the welting in many places. So you really have to do some planning, really think yeah. it out, and and do the basic math. And that's why we lay we lay everything out like we do. Yeah. And I people mean, when they go on, if they haven't gone on those online classes, they'll they'll see us really going into that with great detail. And we have videos. We've shown videos on how to do this too, mm -hmm. YouTube videos too. Yeah. So for all well this people. is a tricky one because of the fact that again last week when we cut all this out, I had no idea that, you know, how to kind of set it up to make sure that you I mean again. yeah well last week we 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 cut them oversized first right. of all we're not cutting out we don't worry about the angles it's another thing we're not going to sweat the angles yet okay till we get it cut out and then we we spent time a whole class in getting our cuts our angle cuts that we need on right Right. And that's always a good thing to pray again next week when we if, when we get into this probably not next. Well, week, we may get we may get into it next okay. week. We may get into uh, sewing it up okay. next week. Okay, because we're going to save I mean the cushion. We can't. So the cushion. I want to emphasize this. The cushion was cut. The top and bottom mm -hmm. was cut oversized. Yes. So we we need, we we couldn't actually make the, the exact pattern because we wanted to make sure this is upholstered first so we can get a proper cut on that, a proper right. read on that. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So I think. That's it, you guys. Unless there's any other live questions or comments, Patrick. Um, no. I Are don't we think good? So. Did we cover enough? You know? Yeah. I'm sorry that we it's got. Kind of a test today. This was a test yeah. for our remote. You know, we've we've been offered. You know, our friends in Ireland, Patrick. What's yeah. his name? Uh, John and Marie. John and oh, Marie. Yeah. They said, when are we coming to Ireland? And, and I think Australia. You know, has been offered. So who knows? Maybe someday, Jimmy, that trailer might come to reality. Your star <laughs> trip. <laughs> I don't think that's going to do it. You want to pan over there, Patrick? At the, uh, at the van. That's the van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. De definitely something that would be... Uh, that's a little too small. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, maybe, maybe we could sleep on top, too, as well. You know, <laughs>
But if the weather's nice, we'll try this again, and it'll be maybe smoother, less wind. Yeah, we're thinking about uh, we're thinking about fibers, and we I know we t we, we have a we have a uh, introduction with the, the coconut fiber. We may change that to seaweed because we were talking about seaweed last You're week. Going to the so beach and making a new intro. Yeah, maybe that's we're right, baby. We're going to have lunch down there. This is not going to be an in and out day. We the are going to have <laughs> no, absolutely. Your yeah. father and I went on a delivery, and. Uh, it was a great time. We, he had the lobster, uh, lobster I roll. I felt a little yeah. bad. I, I got the lobster roll. He got a hot dog, and I, I, I thought I was taking it because he was paying. I thought he was, I was taking advantage of him a little bit. But it was, not, it was a nice day. We were, out, we were totally surprised that there were actually places out there, and that was the great yeah. thing about it. So look forward to being outside more, and I, I we'll try to get it a little bit running a little bit smoother. We didn't realize that... Uh, it's just outside the door is a remote yeah. location. Well, it's not like the doorway and bringing everything out was a bit of a problem. There was a yeah. problem. Course, as soon as we started filming, the, the sun went in yeah. yes. and it started getting windier. Yes. Yeah, Five okay. minutes before it was sunny and warm. You live and learn. <laughs> you live and learn. But I think I remember somebody saying, maybe this isn't a good idea. Mm. <laughs> I wonder who that I, was. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I love the, you, Michaela. You're always right. The sensible one. <laughs> Well, anyhow, thanks a lot, you guys. We'll see you next time. Take I'll care. End, I'll end with a shot of the mascot. <laughs>